What do you call it when online content creators become effective slaves to the algorithm? The answer is audience capture. After they begin to build a successful online presence, social media influencers often feel pressured to give their audience what they want and expect. Tristan Harris, creator of the documentary The Social Dilemma, believes that audience capture goes much deeper than just trying to build online engagement, he says. It involves the gradual and unwitting replacement of a person's identity with one custom made for the audience. Hello, I'm Marcus T. Anthony, and I'm a futurist whose focus is upon the myriad futures of the mind and technology. And today, I'm not only going to show you how audience capture turned a young, 150-pound vegetarian into a 350-pound McDonald's munching carnivore, and how it contributed to the tragic death of another influencer obsessed with his physique, but also how it's a principle that affects you, too. For audience capture, it doesn't just apply to social media influencers. It operates for any individual in the media, entertainment, or the arts, regardless of whether the culture and audience is mainstream or alternative. We are all creating content all of the time. That would be upon the canvas of our own lives. And therefore, giving our power away to the mob is a trap that all of us must be aware of if we are to embody our deep selves. And tests will come because all creators eventually meet disapproval from their audience. Tristan Harris believes that the distortion of self-concept that is generated by audience capture occurs because we're all constantly self-refining as we engage the world. The feedback we acknowledge from others is the key. And for successful online content creators, audience feedback is never ending. However, Harris maintains that we are primarily influenced by what we believe the audience is seeing and saying. And this is an issue which transcends the world of social media influences. For we're all like this to some degree. As Tristan Harris puts it, we develop our personalities as we imagine ourselves through the eyes of others. So each of us shapes himself or herself according to internal criticism that we frame as coming from outside of us as much as by actual criticism. And even then, it is primarily when the criticism of others aligns with our own critique of ourselves that we take note of it. The critic is mostly within. This is how we often give our power away to the critic, often betraying our deep selves in the process. Yet the good news is that our power is actually within us still. We just have to learn to develop the right relationship with that inner voice. Several years ago, I received a torrent of personal abuse on my website, mind-futures.com, after I wrote an article about the late online influencer and bodybuilder Ziz. Tragically, Ziz died at the age of just 22 from heart-related issues while holidaying in Thailand. My article was somewhat critical of the lifestyle of young gym goers like Ziz, and in particular, their use of performance-enhancing drugs. I was not meaning to be disrespectful to Ziz, but coming so soon after his death, I can see now how my take may have been perceived as such. Abusive comments started to pour in, mostly from hefty gym bros, including threats that we will come around to your place and arse rape you. And that's not something I'm really into. Honest. When I read the first few comments, I felt a wave of fear come over me, followed by great guilt. What had I done? But rather than respond to the posts and begin deleting abusive ones, I got up from my computer and went away to a secluded place to meditate and contemplate the matter. As an advocate of shadow work, I allowed the dark side of my mind, full expression, including any judgments and anger towards Ziz fans, to arise. I also allowed my guilt a voice and became present with it. Now, I've been practicing this alignment process for decades. At that time, it allowed me to acknowledge that my blog post was not intentionally abusive. So, after 30 minutes or so of stillness, I felt at peace. I just let it go. A few hours later, I returned to the computer and my website. My fear had mostly ceased, and so I was able to interact respectfully with some of the commentators on my website, including some of the more aggressive ones. I apologized for my part in the drama and said I could understand their anger. That wasn't meant to placate them. It was simply the honest truth. And after a couple of days, the outraged Ziz fans stopped posting and the drama evaporated 
like rain from an angry summer storm. That blog page and most of the comments are still on my website to this day. I only removed one or two of the very worst comments. I simply allowed the energy to play out without any further dramatic engagement from me. Content creators could benefit from adopting this kind of approach to at least some criticism from their fans. Before engaging critics, I recommend that we reflect deeply on our part in the situation. We can also express empathy for our critics, if it's genuine, and look for common ground. We can acknowledge any criticisms that we feel are warranted, but without self-flagellation. I would also recommend to content creators that you respectfully but firmly state that you will not accept abuse, particularly if you feel there's any projection at unacceptable levels. Most of all, I suggest you do not betray your core values, nor your deep self by changing your content simply to please your fans or critics from opposing tribes. It's okay if people are angry at you or if they choose to unfollow you. You may lose users in the short run, but in the long run, you will retain your dignity and your integrity. The very strange case of Nick Accardo and several others. The story of Nicholas Perry is a shocking reminder of the potential dangers of audience capture. Perry began his venture into online blogging in 2016 as a very skinny 24-year-old vegan who would try various snacks and meals on his YouTube channel while also occasionally playing the violin. He gained a few followers who would give him recommendations on what vegan foods to try next. But about a year later, he abandoned his vegan diet for health reasons, and so his range of potential online edibles expanded, along with his waistline. Soon some fans began to goad him into downing increasingly large volumes of food, which he summarily did, and to great fanfare. He soon found himself with a total of 6 million followers on YouTube alone. Perry got a bigger following, a bigger body, and a bigger name. Nikocado, Avocado. Nikocado's shtick became eating whatever his multitude of fans dared him to eat. His weight began to balloon, along with his subscribers list even as he aired videos of himself eating more and more outrageous types and volumes of food. This even included an entire McDonald's menu. His weight went from 150 pounds to around 350. A gay man, Perry's videos began to tell of his pain and anguish and his personal struggles with acceptance and depression. In one video, he seen slumped in a bed in a brand new million dollar apartment he just brought from his considerable YouTube earnings. But now he was obese, cynical, visibly unhappy with his life and the world. In some of his videos, he weeps, clearly depressed, seemingly despising himself. Yet he also appears to be unable to change the caricature he has become because the money and the attention is simply too good. Now, Nick Accardo is far from being the only YouTuber or social media star to experience audience capture and to pay a heavy price for it. The stories are many. I've already mentioned Australian bodybuilder and YouTube icon Ziz, who died at 22 from heart problems. Would he still be alive if not for the tens of thousands of followers whose devoted attention helped transform him from a skinny teenager to a muscular young man with an alleged penchant for steroids, recreational drugs, and heavy partying. Ziz became his own brand until he didn't. Then there's the case of another older YouTuber, giant bodybuilder Rich Piana. A few years ago, Piana had a big hit with his YouTube series, Bigger by the Day, in which he openly shared with his millions of fans the massive amounts of performance enhancing drugs he was taking at the age of 46 in order to add muscle to reach his goal of weighing 300 pounds. You can become anything you want, he extolled in one episode. Piano also injected various synthetic substances into his body to make his muscles look bigger, including synthol and probably silicone. His huge arms and shoulders were almost completely covered in tattoos. The overall effect was that Rich Piano took on the appearance of a real life cartoon character. Just a few months later, 
Piana fell in his bathroom after suffering a heart attack, hitting his head and falling into a coma out of which he never regained consciousness. On Rich Piana's headstone are written the words, He never allowed someone else's opinion of him determine his worth or purpose in life. Piana's headstone also pays tribute to his determination and business achievements, and these are undoubtedly valid points of praise. Yet my perception is that Piana was playing out a drama at the level of mind, as many of us do. For the mind typically likes to set up situations and observers to help concretize the story it believes about itself. And that story often emerges from childhood trauma and the sense we are unloved and inadequate. Telling is a video where Piana had revealed an incident where as a younger man he had told his father that he had failed to achieve a placing in his first bodybuilding show. The anguish in Piana's voice is clear as he tells the tale. Failing to win his father's approval was devastating to him. Could Piana's later excesses be attributed, in part, to seeking approval from his father? Beyond that, as we shift from childhood to adulthood, our internal critic tends to mirror the voice of our parents, repeating their judgments and beliefs about us. In this sense, as an adult, Rich Piana's need of his father's approval simply mirrored his own need to approve of himself. Meme World Captures Its Creators Content creators battling the culture wars of Meme World, including media companies, are particularly prone to audience capture. Because the culture wars terrain is so polarised, it's difficult for them to be even-handed in their opinions about events and problems. You all know what I'm talking about. Ultimately, many develop toxic profit models. Here, it is sometimes unclear if it's the dog wagging the tail or the tail wagging the dog. But tribalist echo chambers extend far beyond the domain of wokesters and trumpsters cyber battling across the internet. It's become a problem right around the world and across multiple discourses and within many arenas you've probably never even heard of. I live in China and YouTube bloggers from abroad who reside in China tend to be either heavy cinephiles or bitterly anti-China. Pro-China channels like The China Report, Cyrus Jansen or Nathan Rich almost always depict China as a radiant and dazzling oriental beauty. It's all delicious Chinese cuisine, high-speed trains and shiny towering skyscrapers. And the economy is always good, even if it isn't. Admittedly, all those things are very much a part of modern China. Videos from these content creators often feature super friendly Chinese people greeting our foreign bloggers on the street. The influencers are keen to show off their Chinese language skills for their approving audience, many of whom appear to be Chinese nationals or Chinese expats abroad. China is a cuddly giant panda that doesn't want to hurt anyone. But like all tribes, they need their common enemies. And that's where the awful Americans, woeful Westerners and misinformation peddling foreign media enter stage left. On the other hand, bloggers like Serpenza, or Serpenza Day, Lao Y86, and China Uncensored present to their mostly Western audience the China narrative those viewers want to hear. Human rights abuses, Communist Party oppression, and minorities in concentration camps. Typically, they throw in stock images of Xi Jinping standing in a military vehicle greeting flag-waving crowds at Beijing military parades flanked by soldiers, tanks, and nuclear weapons in big khaki trucks. The Tank Man of Tiananmen Square makes a special guest appearance every second episode or so, or rather, his video image, forever clenching an angry fist from the year 1989 before that endless line of menacing tanks. Alas, the Tank Man, like many historical figures, has become a meme on Meme World. Ironically weaponized in a future he could never have dreamed of over three decades ago. So, who's telling the truth? The Cenophiles or the Anti-China Brigade? The truth of China is somewhere in between these two extremes, I feel. From my personal perspective, and for the average Chinese person, and I, it's closer to the Cenophile version. But I don't buy into the anti-Western narrative of the Cenophiles. To be honest, I find it rather nauseating. As with the gladiators' fight at the Colosseum in ancient Rome, 
a YouTuber's audience may demand blood, with clicks and likes their preferred weapons. The channel host is instructed as to whom they should spare and whom they should destroy. Perhaps we may cringe or even recoil in horror at certain content creators we see online. Some of them appear to be little more than cartoon characters, barely real. Yet beyond their screen images, beyond their tattoos, metamorphosed body parts and loud voices, they are just as human as you and I. And when they fall, they fall hard. The truth is that we are all just a little bit like Nikocado, Ziz, and Rich Piana, and even Serpenza. We often shape our personas to meet the approval of others. We may seek to influence them such that we can win their approval, or just garner a little cash. The dull ache of pain carried within the heart may be a factor also. In fermenting the approval of others, we might convince ourselves that we are desirable that we are worthy of love. Yet the spiritual traditions teach us that we are already worthy of love. Indeed, we are love. In that realization, we may find our greatest power. See you again in the myriad futures.